All right, so we're going to go over how you can create this uh, tap to cycle effect. So these you can just tap through. And the best part is you can export it, reuse it, so you never have to actually look at this part again. How sweet is that? All right, so I have my project here. I have five different color corrections, and you can see they're all active at the same time, which does not look good. So let's give the user the ability to tap on the screen and cycle through each color correction individually. Now, the script we're going to create will work for any scene object. It doesn't have to be a color correction. It could be other post effects. It could be 3D objects. Anything in here we'll be, be able to use with our script. So let's go ahead and add a script graph down here. We'll use the visual editor. And um, before we start editing it, let's go ahead and add it to our scene. So I'm just going to add a scene object. I'll rename this tap to cycle. Add a component, script component, add script, script graph, and we're ready to go. All right, so let's click this and open up the graph editor. All right, so you'll see we have a couple events here. So on awake is when the lens starts, when it turns on, and then update event is every frame update. Uh, we don't need the update event, so let's just delete that. And I'm just going to scale things around a little bit so we have more space base to work with. All right, so we do want to start with this on awake. So let's start with the first issue. So our first issue is everything's active at the same time. Now we could come through and just manually disable these to start the lens. But uh, especially if you have like uh, 3D objects around the head and you're making adjustments, I like to be able to just leave these active as I'm working on the lens and let the script take care of disabling everything and just making sure the first item is enabled. So let's go ahead and do that. I want to, uh, first of all, be able to access uh, the scene objects. I'm going to right click, add node, and I want a scene object array input. All right, so a scene object is just any generic object over here. That's what we want. And an array is just a list of items. So rather than having, uh, say, 10 inputs for 10 items, we can just have a single array input and select as many items as we want. I'm going to give this a name. I'll call it objects. And I'm just going to move it down here. And let's start out by disabling everything. So since it is a list, we want to loop through the list and disable each item one by one. I'm going to right click. I'm going to add a for each. So this loop will just take an array, in this case our scene objects, and it'll loop through each object and let us disable it. Now, as for each, this little triangle input here is a, you can think of it as what's going to trigger this loop. It's not just going to run all the time. We want it to just run when the lens starts. We'll trigger that here. You might see some errors coming out here in the logger. That's just because this loop doesn't have anything to do yet. So what we want to do is we want to enable or actually disable our scene objects. So I'm going to start searching for enabled and there are lots of uh, set enabled things here. You can see that for different types of things, you want to come down to scene object and find the set enabled for that because we're working with scene objects. All right. So this body trigger will just trigger for each item in the list. So if we have five items, it'll trigger five times. That's what we want because each item we need to disable scene object will be each individual scene object. Plug that into here. And then this value here, if it's checked, it will enable the object. If it's unchecked, it will disable. All right, so let's take a look at this. Super simple. When the lens starts, we'll loop through our objects array and disable everything. Now you might notice we still have errors here. Nothing's happening. That's because we need to select our script here. And over here, we can see we now have an objects input. Let's click add value. We'll get this value zero box. Just click the box. Come in here and then click the first item, hold shift, select the last one, or you can hold down control and individually select them. Yeah, okay, now everything's disabled. Perfect. Now you can remove ob objects as you need or add more if you decide you have more stuff in your effect. In our script, we don't need to make any changes because it will loop through everything in our list. Perfect. Now, if you see this error here, that's just from before. Uh, before you had selected these objects, uh, it'll disappear in a minute. 
But if you really want to be sure, click this little trash can in the logger to clear it, reset your lens, and there's no errors. All right, so the first part of our effect is done. We are starting with a clean slate, everything's disabled. Um, so now let's go ahead and make sure our first object in our list is enabled. So I'm going to need this uh, same set enabled. So I'm just going to do control C, control V to copy paste. And I want to trigger that with this then. So we didn't touch this um, part before, but this then will run after the entire loop is done. So once everything is disabled, let's go ahead and run this. You see we have an error because we don't have an object to enable. So now let's add a get element. You can see it's in this array section. So get element will select one element from an array. So let's plug in our array, plug in the scene object, and we want to check the box so it's enabled. Now you can see our first post effect is turning on and not all the rest. Now, if you've never worked with arrays before, you haven't programmed before, uh, something that is a little weird is this index. This is saying at which position we're grabbing something. Um, lists typically start at index zero. So we have five objects in our list. Uh, this first one will be index zero, index one, index two, index three, index four. So there are five items total, um, but our index only goes up to four because zero is included. And so that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, it's a little weird at first, but with time, it'll become second nature. All right, so we have our project set up. Uh, now let's actually start doing our cycling through everything. So we want to trigger this with a tap. So I'm going to right click, add node. I'm going to search for tap event. All right, so if you're wondering why I know everything I need to add, that's because I've already built this project. Um, but I will say sometimes the trickiest part of using this graph editor is knowing what to search for because there are so many things in there. If you right click and hit add nodes, you can just scroll through and the list just goes on forever. Uh, so it does take a little bit of trial and error to know what to search for, knowing what things are named, uh, in addition to knowing what you need. Um, but the Lens Studio documentation is very good, and just with practice, you'll start to kind of get a hang of what things you need to be adding. All right, so we have our tap event, and I'm going to go ahead right now and set up a sequence. So you'll notice um, lots of our nodes need a trigger. Uh, this on awake, this tap event, they are triggers themselves but I can only connect it to one thing at a time. If I try to connect this, say up here, you can see that's not allowed. The sequence, what it lets us do is it lets a single trigger go through and fire off multiple triggers and it will go in order. So we'll fire this trigger. Once everything there is done, we'll fire the next one and so on and so forth. So I know that this sequence is going to need four outputs. Uh, so with this node selected, you can just change this count. Uh, what we're first going to do is we're going to take a counter. Um, well, actually, before that, we are going to disable the current object. Uh, we're going to move on to the next item in our list. If we're at the end, we'll go back to the beginning. And then the last step will be enabling that new object. Uh, so I mentioned a counter. Um, so let's actually get that set up before we start doing too much here. So we're going to come back up to our on awake. We want to set a variable. So let's add a variable up here. I'm going to call this counter. For the type, we want that to be a number. And now uh, we have a variable. Let's give it a starting value of zero uh, because we're starting at index zero. I'm going to add a set variable. Now it will default to set counter if you have multiple variables in your script. You can just choose it here. We want to set it to zero, but we need a trigger for it. We can't plug this on awake into there. So there are a couple of things we can do. Um, either we can add a sequence up here, or we can take this and just at the end, after this set enabled runs, we can add it here. So the pros and cons to each. Um, sometimes I like the sequence because it's nice to kind of package up individual steps. 
that can get a little messy. Um, up here, this approach, it's a little more clean, but if you have lots of events, you're going to get a super long line. So up here, let's go ahead and use this method of just chaining onto the end. But for actual tapping, we'll stick with this sequence. All right. So now that we have this counter, let's come in here and start disabling and enabling our different objects. The first thing I want to do is I want to, um, I'm going to copy the set enabled and the get element. So I'm just holding down control as I click to select multiple, copy and paste. Now, what I want to do is I want to get the element at my current counter. So up here, uh, we just knew it was index zero because we're starting the first time in the list. Uh, down here, we need to grab our counter variable because we don't know which point in our list we are. That's super easy. We're just going to get variable. And that should default to a counter variable. Uh, if you have multiple variables, just make sure you select the right thing here. So I'm going to get the counter. I'll use that for the index. For the array, it will be our scene objects from before. You can see we're starting to get a little messy here with everything going on. And then our scene object, we're going to disable it. And that'll be our first trigger from the sequence. All right. So let's uh, make sure things are working. So if I tap here, you should see our effect disabled. Uh, nothing else happens if I keep tapping. That's because uh, we aren't looping through everything yet. All right. So just a quick recap, we are when someone taps, we'll disable the current object and then we'll move on to activating the next one uh, because we don't want things layered on top of each other. All right. So now that we're doing that, let's go ahead and increase our counter. So that is pretty easy to do. And uh, we want to get our counter variable. We want to add a number to it. Now you can see there's lots of different ads. We just want this math one. This is just a number. We'll have our counter. Now I'll select this add. We're going to add one. And we want to, once again, set our variable. So we're going to take counter, add one, and then save that as the counter again. And that will be the second trigger from the sequence. All right, so we disable the original object. We increment our counter to move on to the next item in the list. And then we will... Um, in just a moment, be enabling that. So let's just do a quick test. I'm just going to tap one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh oh, now we have an error down here in the logger. So it says cannot write property enabled of undefined. So what in the world is going on? Uh, what's going on is our counter, once we tap enough, once we get past index four, because we have five, five items in the list, uh, we can't get that element. If our counter is five, there's no index five. So this is failing. So our next step in our script is going to be checking to see what our counter is. If it's too high, we're going to reset that to zero. So I want to get my counter. So I'm just going to copy that now, really quickly. Let's make a little more space. We're getting a little more complicated here. Um, so if you lose this little sidebar thing, there's a little arrow you can click. Uh, let's go and just hide that for now. I'm going to move some things out of the way. So we've already connected all that. We'll let it get a little messy. All right, so let's get our counter. And we are going to see if it's greater than or equal to. Now you can't search for the words greater than or equal to. You have to actually type in the symbols. So this is greater than or equal to what? What do we want this to be greater than or equal to? Uh, the length of our list of items. We're going to add a node. We want to get the length, and we want to make sure we grab it from the arrays section. We need to add our array. So we have this scene objects thing here. We're going to grab that. We'll get the length of it. And now we can compare our counter to the length of our list. Now, index four is fine, and four is less than five, which is the length. Once our counter gets to five, we're now equal to the length, and we can reset it. So if we always reset it when we get to the length, uh, technically we don't need this greater than 
my symbol, uh, but it's just a little extra bit of redundancy. Um, I just like to use it. So we're going to go with it. All right, so now we're doing our check. So now let's take an if. Our condition here. So if our counter is greater than or equal to the length of our list, I will fire this true statement. Otherwise, it will fire the false trigger. Now, if it's not greater than or equal to that, we don't care. We've already increased our number. So we're just not going to connect anything to the false, just the true. And so this true, we're going to set counter. So let's just copy that. We'll set counter back to zero. So now if I click over here, I'm not cycling through all my effects, um, but we should be good. Now I got an error there. So let's um, save our script, reset. And now I can just click as many times as I want. And I keep getting my error. So maybe, oh, that's the problem. We forgot to connect the sequence to the if. So that's why um, we should always be checking periodically as we go along, because this was pretty easy to find right now rather than later once everything's connected. All right, so I can click as many times as I want, and uh, we aren't getting any errors, because any time our counter gets too high, we reset it to zero. All right, so let's scoot all this stuff out of the way. We're almost done, so I'm not going to worry too much about organization. Let's just get this finished up. All right, so the last step is once we've disabled the initial object, gone on to the next one, we just want to enable our new object. So that will be essentially the same get element set enabled thing. So I'm going to select get counter, get element set enabled, copy and paste those, and then just hook up the trigger and the object. Make sure that is set to true to enable it. Now as I tap through, oh, we've got our array. The joys of programming. All right, now if we tap through, oh boy, we lost the connection. All right, now if we tap through, we can go through all of our different effects and it resets to the beginning once we get to the end. All right. So I'm just going to leave you two last little tips or tricks. Uh, the first thing, um, which is kind of neat, is we can add any objects to our list that we're cycling through. So we could add a 3D object. But what I'm going to add is I'm actually going to add a scene object. Let's drag this in here so we can see it's here. And I can add that here. Now, why would I want to do this? Let's say you want to have an option where there's no filter. Now, if I tap through, so I'm on my second one, third, fourth, fifth. Now, if I tap one more time, I'm on the scene object. So it's an object that exists. The script can read it, but it's not actually doing anything to my scene. So it's as if there's no filter. So if you need like a no filter look or something, just add a scene object and your script can use it. So that's super helpful. And now the last little trick I want to show you is if you come here to your script graph, you can right click and hit export, save this something, and then you never have to do all this again. All you have to do is in your new project, come into here, click from files and find that file you exported. Now, it should be a dot LSO file or something um, because it's a script graph. Uh, so just remember where you save it and then it will just work. You just add it to your scene, choose your values, and you don't need to mess with this messy tangled spaghetti ever again. So hopefully you learned something, uh, but also hopefully you have something you can just reuse and you don't need to do this every time you want to tap to cycle through effects in your lens. Mm -hmm.